Welcome to the uh, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot Podcast. I'm your host, James Ford. This is the fifth episode, and today I have with me Mac, and I also have a special guest with us, Bacha. Um, Mac, why don't you go ahead and reintroduce yourself again? I'm still Mac. What did you do in the military? So I still held the two worst jobs in the Marine Corps. What were they? I was a military police officer and a recruiter. Mm -hmm. So you can hate me all you want. I mean, it could have been worse. Yeah. Well, I mean, I fucked your, body, uh, your buddy and then your mom, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, Bacha? Okay. My name is Bacha. I was 11 Bravo out of Fort Drum. Uh, we did Afghanistan for all of 09 and Iraq, Kuwait, and 11 and 12. Okay. And so, what? Um, how long did you spend in the military? I did about four and some change. Um. And what was like, what at what age did you, um, you know, decide that you that you were going to join the military? Well, it's funny because I tried to join the military when I was younger, but I'd gotten into some trouble. Yeah. So, and I actually had uh, already had my bachelor's, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't let me in. So then, when they opened up the floodgates there between uh, 07, 08, uh they actually. Went down, took my ass fab, you know, in San Antonio. I uh, came back and they said I could do anything I wanted to do. And then they, they actually, another funny story is they gave me a $92,000 bonus. Yeah. Because they thought I was going to go OCS. But I was like, no, sir, I'm going 11, bang, bang. And that was one pissed off recruiter. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I do have one question. So did you bring Scott's? doctor's prosthetic arm oh no but that is a great story jimmy <laughs> so scott was telling us a story the other day and i know i was very skeptical about coming on this program at first anyway when i saw <laughs> jimmy had a gigantic post that said nothing but butt talk <laughs> we laughed about it he explained to me how crazy that it is and i, I love him and mac so anyway it's a pleasure being on here with y'all but uh so scott of course he's a tanker so it's understandable he was talking about a doctor they had that would check prostates that had a fake arm. So while he had one finger in their butt, he had put the fake arm on the right shoulder and his left arm on the other shoulder. So it would really be a creepy situation. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to rub the prostate. Yeah, and I told Scott, are you sure that was a fake arm? <laughs> <laughs> He couldn't uh, confirm it. He, he couldn't could not, confirm he it. Could he not. couldn't confirm whether that was a, a fake what, arm or what, what it was. What a creepy doctor to have in, a, in the freaking combat zone, man. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> why are we checking prostates in a combat zone? Yeah. I, don't, I don't understand why he was, you know, why he was out there with a fake arm too. It's, yeah, like that's funny. Well, <laughs> I, I think it started all, all over here. And then he just took his fake arm with him whenever they deployed. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you guys seen that YouTube video? There's like a it's it's a bunch of younger veterans, but like there's a YouTube video where he's telling a story about um, about this guy named Staff Sergeant Walker, hmm. and they're like they do this like deployment training thing down to like Louisiana or somewhere down over there. And it's like one big smorgasbord. No one really knows each other. They get put into like separate squads. And one of the, the staff sergeant's duffel bags topples over. And a, a massive veiny dildo fell out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> and he, this private, he was like telling the story. He was like, I'm brand new in the army. I saw it. I didn't know what to think. I, was, I just turned around. And I started coming up with all these wild scenarios in my head. And one of those scenarios was, no, nah, maybe maybe he's an amputee. It's his amputee arm. <laughs> <laughs> and the way he described it, he was like, this is the biggest fake penis I've ever seen in my life. It looked like a Godzilla action figure. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was, when I was in Afghanistan in... 2012 and 2013 I was a customs agent yeah so basically what I did was uh, for the most part I checked for dirt mm -hmm. uh, contaminants and whatnot coming back to the US but we also checked you found my dirty videos then did no, you probably <laughs> so we also checked all of the personnel leaving Afghanistan to go back to Kyrgyzstan before they came back to the US 
And so we had the whole setup. I mean, it was like TSA. We had we were checking bags. We had an we had one of those CBTs, the bo- the body scanners, mm-hmm. which those things are nuts to begin with. Roger. But every once in a while, you have these grunt battalions come through, mm-hmm. and you want to talk about the gayest shit <laughs> <laughs> would come out of their bags. Uh-huh. <laughs> we had this sergeant major. He was we were giving him the speech beforehand because we go out twenty four hours ahead, kind of give him that amnesty period, and then we'd have an amnesty box. That amnesty box, man, I don't. I don't want to tell you about the horrors that came out of that thing, <laughs> but some of these guys, they would just think that they could get stuff through because the star major's like, well, my battalion, there's no, there's none of them gays in there. There's not going to be anything homosexual in any of these bags. And we're like, we'll wait, we'll call you over, star major. Right. So this kid had, so we, we popped this kid's bag because we do a 10% check, yeah. dumped out this dude's bag. He had a big old dildo and half a box of condoms. Wow. Whoa. Like, Sergeant Major, come uh, here, Bob. <laughs> wow. But this is after Don't Ask, Don't Tell, so, I mean, there's nothing he could do about it. But. Yeah. We had we had one guy in our unit in Afghanistan. Thank gosh he's not on social media. At least if he is, I haven't seen him. But yeah, if anyone that I served with knows who I'm talking about, um, this guy had a, a pocket pussy mailed to him. A sex toy from his wife mailed to him. And the creepy part was, it's like, all right, you know, you know, every guy's going to do their business. But the creepy part was, is he was offering it up for other people to use. Oh, what, was it Blue Mountain State? I didn't, I didn't look at it. I didn't want to know. Have you ever seen the show like, Blue Mountain State? It was just creepy. I mean, I wouldn't even want to touch it or look uh, at it either. I did, yeah. Like, it was just the creepiest That's thing. Just, I may ask him where he got it and get my own. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody knows it gets hot in that porta potty yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was, just, it was, like, <laughs> it was uh, so creepy. I, I, I hope no one took him up on the offer. I never asked anyone. It's something I'd steer cl- very far away from. You know? Roger that. Roger that. <laughs> We had a guy, and he got this big box, and, uh, you know, we sat tight and choose. I was on a uh, cop in the uh, Wardak province. But anyway, we had a guy who got this big box, and he was so excited that his mom had sent some stuff. And he opens it up, and it's a, it's an ass with a big deal that'll stick to a table. <laughs> <laughs> that, that you could fuck. <laughs> this came from his mom. An excited guy. Yeah. <laughs> I had my eye on him the rest of the deployment. <laughs> that guy is creepy, man. My, my, my mom said I'm a detachable ass that you could fuck. <laughs> I was just like, that is ridiculous. Oh, yeah, my I, God. Thought, I thought that our guy that was damn near in love with his mom was the creepy one. Like, she used to, like, when we were in Afghanistan, she would send him pictures of chicks and be like, you should date this girl. Oh, that's weird. Like, Look how big her boobs are and we're like, Wagner, that ain't right. Yeah. That's not right at all. That ain't right. that. <laughs> no. Your mom he called one of our, that. he called one of our E6's mom once instead of ma'am. Mm. Yeah. We, we didn't let, what? that dude was creepy. What the heck? Yeah. Mm. Big old creep dude. Oh my gosh. So, um, how long have you been out now since? I got out the, uh, very, very end of 2012. Yeah, and started uh, trying to adapt to civilian lot of life in 13. Yeah. Um, what it, what it was what were, what were some of the first like what were some of the things that you did when you got out? And what were some of the things that you like struggled with? Well, you know, everybody when you know you're ready to get out, you miss the camaraderie, you miss the uniform, but at the same time you're ready to take the uniform off and you're ready to move on, and you you think it's going to be a lot easier. Mm-hmm. Than it really is, mm-hmm. and I luckily already had a job um, working on an old deal for a guy here in town mm-hmm. by the name of Terry Pruitt. Great, great dude. He gave me a job and was real lenient with me too because I would I was in charge of, of, of a crew, and it's not like the army. I realized real quick you can't expect civilians to do what yeah. you're asking to, and you you got to talk nice to them. Got and you know we're, we're used to giving commands and get that shit done. Yeah. So I had a lot of uh, Hispanics that were mad at me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Roger that. But 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 anyway, I kind of adapted to that. Stayed in the old field. Uh, went through some 
Dark Times uh, actually got divorced in uh, 15. Mm -hmm. We separated in 13. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, that, 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 that was a pretty dark period, too, you know. Yeah. And I was on unemployment during the time, just trying to hold down uh, the the fort. I had a house and then not far from here over in Castle Rock. Yeah. And, uh, and anyway, uh, what what helped me was just being around other veterans. And then uh, I, I actually uh, had a cousin who worked for the local MHMR and heard about a group called the Military Veteran Peer Network, and it is the best job that I've ever had. Yeah. yeah. So. <clears throat> so, like, how long have you been working with the Military Peer Network? Uh, I've gone on four years. Yeah. And then, then now, yeah, I, I believe I started off with them, like, in 15. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. What What are, like, some of the, like, you know, I wouldn't, don't say any, like, names or anything like that, but what's, like, some of the stuff that you see, like, veterans struggling with the most in, in the community? Uh, you know, what I see the most of and where I was too was I was I was drinking too much and I was becoming too much of a recluse, mm -hmm. you know, and I think there's so many guys that, you know, you, you sit at home and people don't understand everything you go through and I don't care what your MOS was, what you did in the combat zone, just being in a combat zone for a year is enough to you know, I mean, you're going to be a different person. Mm -hmm. I mean, and even if you don't see anything, you know, every second, you know, you're over there and y'all know this too, you got a chance of, of, of dying. And so to think about that for a year and then it, it does affect you more than I believe you, you understand. And some guys come back and they're, uh, you know, over anxious, they'll get anxiety. Of course, no one likes sitting with their back door to a door. No one likes crowds. I mean, that's, part of how I think we all are but the part that hurts is when that person won't reach out and, mm -hmm. and try to be around other veterans and I've seen them lock themselves up and just play video games and drink Yeah, I work hand in hand with local law enforcement and not long ago we go to a E6's house that's been in the army for 8 years and uh, he had drank too much playing video games alone I think he drank like a handle and a half, and then he passed out in the bathtub. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he almost dr 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 drowned. Luckily, the water, he left the water on, so it overran, and the neighbor came, so they called me because they thought I was attempted suicide. When I got to talk to him, it's exactly what I'm talking about right now. All he does when he's not with his unit, uh, and, and I believe he's doing some stuff with A&M too, but all he does is play video games. He's not putting himself... Mm -hmm. I believe any veteran going through anything, the the best medicine is to be around other v v v v veterans. When I started my job, I wasn't right by any means whatsoever. But yeah. the more of the veterans I got to talk to, I'd be like, well, shit, I ain't as fucked up as I thought I was. He's fucked up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like, I mean, yeah, that's, that's a similar, like, you know, like, I can almost re relate to that because it's like, you know, I moved here. I didn't know anyone. Roger that. And I reached out to um, TNQ, Team Never Quit, and they're mm -hmm. like, they pointed me right to you. Yeah. And like once, once I, once I met you, dude, my life changed here. It was just like <clears throat> I was telling Mac and I we were talking earlier, and I was like, you know, I lived in a metro, you know, on the outskirts of a metro right. in San Antonio, and like you'd think you there, you'd meet a lot of people, you meet a lot of people, but man, when I'm when I moved here, the connection with the, the veteran community, even with non-veterans, is even stronger here right. than it is anywhere else I've ever been. Mm -hmm. And that's, that was like the one thing that I was telling, you know, it, this would be, a, this is a tough community to move from because there's so much support here. Roger that. And it's, it's incredible. College yeah. Station veterans, we're better than you and you know it. <laughs> 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 Could make that awkward and say that. College Station veterans have built Ford Tough. Butt talk, 2019. No, I could talk trash because I drive a Dodge, but 
got a lot of miles and she likes to stop working. <laughs> it's finger looking good. <laughs> if Sarah was to hear, hear this podcast and me talk trash against Ford, she'd be like, your truck doesn't run anyways. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. <laughs> so, all right, that, well, that's cool. So, like, how long, um, like, where do you see, like, like this, like, the support, like, the network going, like... Well, we have fallen under TVC, you know, Texas Veteran Commission, which is a good thing. Okay. But, uh, um, sometimes there, it gets to be a uh, little bit too much politics. Like, the uh, guy who started the Military Veteran Peer Network was just a guy that just realized the best thing for veterans was other veterans and now, now that we fall under TVC they're wanting uh, the head person which our old the the, the original creator has stepped down he, he's doing another you know an entirely different mission but now they're saying the person there has to be a licensed clinician and it, mm-hmm. it's just getting a little bit too political and I think they're uh, kind of forgetting that it's about veterans helping veterans. But as, as far as growth, uh, we are, and anybody listening to this also, if you're not familiar with Tex Vets, uh, it's tex.vets.com. If you get on that too, uh, you know, it'll pull up all the doctors in your, your, your area that you can use, and it's, just, it's got a plethora of, of awesome intel too. Oh, I didn't even know that. So yeah. speaking of politics of that, so what do you think would take to change it to a place that you and your fellow counselors would want to see? Well, the only way to be able to create that knack would be go out and get our own grant and just hope that in that first year we'd be able to do enough to prove that uh, we deserve another grant. Like uh, I believe the the Military Veteran Peer Network started and it took them a while to grow and then they finally started falling up under the MHMRs uh, because uh, the the founder, Sean, is just an awesome dude, smart cat. And uh, he realized the need for veterans helping the veterans and, and, and working with local law enforcement also. Mm-hmm. By the way, if you hadn't uh, recognized yet, uh, I do stutter. Yeah. I want to hear shit about, oh, I like to hear you call in for a medevac. Because <laughs> <laughs> of the combat zone. When last hey, he just kept a couple of shots of vodka in his bag when he had a call over the radio. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> we, we can tell how much Pat has had to drink by yeah. how little he stutters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no shit. And so, I took my Adderall late today, so I sound like a runaway 50 cow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Life is better in cyclic. Right, right. Hey, so it's a lot better than that drive-through window at Waterburger when I got everybody food a while ago. That lady's like, "How many whoa, 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 Waterburger?" I'm like, "Man, I will jerk you through that window." <laughs> so you know, I can't tell you how many times I'm stuttering at that I'm ordering food, and they're like, oh, "We have a bad connection." No, you don't, bitch. I stutter. <laughs> Or is that your truck? <laughs> what kind of fucking truck goes? Rrr, 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 rrr. <laughs> Try to say root beer, bitch. <laughs> uh, <shit. laughs> so <laughs> it's hard for me to come back to the politics after that. Oh, man. Oh, man. I guess so, I so obviously, what you do here as a counselor is is a, a huge impact in the community. Uh, Roger. I mean, I know I've sat up at two o'clock in the morning and chatted with you because of, of things that I've struggled with. I'm right. sure yeah, Jimmy has I, I as well. Oh, you know, uh, just days when I'm I'm struggling to begin with, I just come over with we play pool. Or Roger that. You kick my ass in washers and then kick my ass in pool. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's it's obviously a huge impact. I mean, everybody in this community knows you. Everybody knows to call you. Yeah. Um, and, and even when I would go to the VA, I'll drop off my card over there and sit to the counselors and be like, hey, call this guy if you have struggles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you know, I've had buddies that are in the police academy here that have remembered you. Roger. Um, so it's a, it's a huge thing. So 
even letting alone the grant aspect of it in the in the the world that you live in right now through TVC mm -hmm. what kind of like what kind of lobbying do you think that you could that that would create because there's a, a metric ton of veterans in Texas Roger that and there's a metric ton that don't necessarily like politics Roger that yeah because we Politics don't affect us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's nothing that we could do that we'd be able to change. Yeah. So as concerned citizens and concerned veterans now, what kind of lobbying do you think would take to, to get it so that you guys are, are being able to do things the way that need to be done as opposed to doing things the way that you're being told to be done? Yeah, well, well TBC, I think, is really trying to implement a, a good plan. And uh, uh, I believe they're headed in the right direction. Okay. But we're we're getting too much into like now. I, I go down uh, in de this coming December, and I get uh, I got to go to some training on uh, some new bylaw that came out that said that now we all have to be trained in uh, uh, some kind of first aid, mental health, and not like first aid like a band aid, like mental health issues mm -hmm. and it, it's it's going to be uh, you know d directed towards uh, the veterans also so I mean it's something good to have but uh, so they want me to be able to, to teach this class a certain amount of times a quarter also which I mean I don't mind but I'm going down and doing you know jail counseling on Thursdays uh, we have our little uh, Bible study group that meets on uh, Wednesdays and, uh, you know, I, I also have full custody of my nine-year-old, so you, you've been over and, and seen uh, my, my, my son Trace, but there's just a lot of stuff that is going on. And believe it that I love it when you guys come over because I don't care what time it is. Like, that's, that's brotherhood, and it helps me just as much as it helps y'all every time. Well, like one thing I realized, you know, like coming here is like I didn't even for myself, like I didn't realize like how much I needed to be around other veterans, you Roger. know, because I can come over, I can go over and hang out with you, mm -hmm. I can go hang out with you, mm -hmm. or even we can all come together and just we're like chilling, you know, doing something, in, you know, Vaca's back backyard or something like that, and it's like, you know, just doing that with you guys, it's like makes a huge impact on how the rest of my week goes. Mm -hmm. and, and I didn't really comprehend it when I was back, you know, over there in San Antonio. It was just, you know, I had a few friends I hung out with, but there wasn't really, like, a community. You know, the veterans, some veterans, you know, they got the other, I'm not going to speak of his name, because we got that other huge, you know, nonprofit over there that we all see commercials about, and it's like, yeah, they do stuff together, but at the end of the day, it's not a community. They all go home or they don't talk to each other ever again. Mm -hmm. Right. Or, you know, there's nothing, there's no relationship with each other. Um, and it's just like, you know, you you might get something out of it temporarily, but there isn't like a long-term benefit of it. And that's something that I, I realize that I, you know, the power of that, you know, having that community, you know, it just, it's, it's a huge impact and it's like mm -hmm. I didn't it's weird because I knew after I've been here for a while that I needed it mm -hmm. and then once I realized how much it helped I was just like hey I'm coming over tonight right. I'm coming over tonight I just right. came over by myself yeah. was, I knew when I needed it and, man, and you fine. knew when I needed yeah. it yeah it was yeah. weird yeah I'll tell you what though so Pat's got this beautiful dog named Sensei yeah oh yeah man I love that dog but Oh, I hate her at the same time because she can always tell you when there's something wrong with you. She <laughs> does. She does. She, does. She's a she just service dog. <laughs> big ass 120 pound Tibetan mastiff. She'll, She'll be hey, over there barking yeah. at you, like, "Hey, speak, yeah, speak. Use your words, you crazy sob." Yeah, yeah. I'm like sensei, I don't want to talk. Yeah, I was over at your place the other mm -hmm. weekend. She came running through the door wagging her tail for me. Yeah, like, was, I didn't even see it, but you're like, man, she was so excited to see you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she was. And, and the, the uh, funny story on, on that is when I had uh, qualified and was about to get a 
service dog is between a Siberian Husky, uh, Basset Hound, and, and her. Well, the Siberian Husky was a male, and my son at the time was like, I want to say four. And uh, I knew a female uh, would be very protective of my son and be a, a, a good dog at the same time. And I was not fixing to look like an asshole in the mall with a Basset Hound service dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fuck Boss Hog, man. I'm not that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, would you want a Basset Hound service dog? No, no. no. I don't know. It depends on what kind of hunting I'm doing with the, with the service I dog. I don't know, man. That's, that's you imagine just... that thing, though? It'd be like, whenever it senses something wrong with you, it's like bowing at you. Like, you're like man I'm fixing to kick that dog's ass (laughs) (laughs) you're like having a a dream of a little night it's like (laughs) (laughs) this isn't Uh, Fox and the Hound son go away (laughs) that's that's one thing about uh, about, puppy puppy uh, hears hears barking he's like oh there's a bass at home he's like (laughs) (laughs) you come on it (laughs) I heard someone say my name in dog tone. <laughs> but uh, there's a cat that keeps messing with my dang dog. And it'll be about 2 in the morning and Trace and I'll be asleep. And I mean, since I was torn up both blinds on both sides of my front door, and I did the other night, I was like, you know what, I'm going to do some recon. So I just waited because I thought it was like kids or something like that. And then as soon as I heard since I going off, I ran around the back and, and had my surefire. Boom, there it was, a little brown cat that walks by right where, like, just messing with Sensei, man. <laughs> oh, my cat will do that from door. the inside windows and go torture the torture the big dogs out, out back. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's funny. They'll just, like, jump behind the, the blinds and just, like, <laughs> stare at them like, you can't touch me. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> So where, where are you originally from? Are you originally from this area? Uh, Roger that. I uh, grew up here. Okay. In, in Bryan College Station. I went to Bryan Schools for one year uh-huh. and then uh, finished up here. Uh, graduated from Anna Consolidated. And uh, then I went to, uh, I played a little football at U of H for a year. Didn't really like it up there in the third ward. And uh, we got into some trouble too that was when our head coach put porn on our uh, game film we watched after Michigan beat the hell out of us mm-hmm. and the NCAA came down on him so I just had to roll out <laughs> and I'm, I'm sorry serious. it's not funny well, it's like, not funny but it's I'm, also and, what and was I'm he thinking even, I mean like come on you got a bunch of college kids and I mean you know I consider myself a Christian too and then you see Tyrone Wheatley score a, about a hundred and eight yard uh, kickoff return and then all of a sudden here comes his penis and this girl's mouth and she's like oh yeah <laughs> and we're like whoa coach <laughs> and like all the way through because I guess he thought it was going to enlighten the mood because I think they beat us that game 70 something uh, mm-hmm. maybe 10 I guess he thought it was going to work out but he ended up losing his job mm-hmm. and that's old John Jenkins that's why he's pretty much banned to the CFL mm-hmm. he, he, he's coaching in Canada now. Oh man. But oh, anyway, I uh, went to U of H. That didn't work out. Came back here for three years and I uh, I, I had gotten into a little bit of tr- trouble and uh, went to a school in, in Abilene called Abilene Christian. I had a cousin transfer from TCU to ACU. So I did, did, did uh, ACU for a year and then I transferred over to Hardin Simmons. Mm hmm. And I got my bachelor's and my master's from Harden Simmons while I was uh, able to play a little pro ball in G- Germany. Mm-hmm. And then I got out and I did. I was a stunt man for NBC for uh, series one, series two of Friday Night Lights. And then my uncle was like, "Are you gonna do something with your life? I mean, you think you're gonna be a fucking movie star?" And I'm like, "No, Unc, but I love Austin and this is a fun deal I'm doing right now." And he's like, uh, "Okay." You're going to check out the Army. He goes, if I get you a good bonus, we and I said, oh, you can just get me in the Army. I'd love to be in. Yeah. So, and, you know, he used to run. He's, he's a retired full bird, so he used to run 
was recruiting for a third of the U.S. Mm -hmm. So you talk about a Yoda. He, <laughs> when he went in there. I got early fucking ship out for having my degree. Uh, I mean, it was it was just it, it was crazy. I got uh, the main thing was he got me uh, sixty thousand of, of all that was student loan payback, mm -hmm. which really pissed me off because you know Uncle Sam says he's gonna give you sixty, which Uncle Sam's just paying Uncle Sam back. Yeah. And then Uncle Sam ends up taxing what Uncle Sam's paying Uncle Sam. Mm -hmm. So out of that sixty, they probably paid about, nah, I'd say forty four to forty six. Yeah. Towards my student loans, which at the time was probably around eighty. Yeah. So, but but anyway, helped me out a a lot, and that's when I. My uncle brought me down. I signed my contract, did the whole deal. They actually took a picture of me and, and holding this big-ass fake check that they had in the window of that recruiting station, teasing kids for probably four or five years like that it's possible to get that much because I think they felt like assholes after it, if they realized what they had done. Yeah. But anyway, so then I... Uh, within the, the two weeks after I signed, I'm, uh, you know... Headed to Fort Benning. Yeah. Roger that. <clears throat> if you could, off the top of your head, name them, what are your top three favorite war movies? Mm. Oh, me? No. Oh, Full Metal Jacket is Full Metal one. Jacket is number one. Is number one. Uh, I mean, I'm a Marine, so that doesn't... Yeah. That doesn't help... Uh, we were soldiers. That's what I was about to that's say. A, is that's a bad ass movie. We were soldiers with old man. I, I love, I love that one. And then, you know, the, the, there's an old school one too with uh, Clint Eastwood. I don't re remember the name of it, but he's always chewing on a big ass cigar and shit. Oh, um, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Heartbreak Ridge, but again, I'm a Marine, so I'm pretty basic. <laughs> what was that movie? Um, that uh, that just came out a little while ago. It was like a year or two ago, but it was the one where they were in the tank. Oh man! Oh, the one with the uh, Brad Pitt like, and Shia LaBeouf. You talking about like 12? best job I ever had? Best job I ever had. Yeah. No, what's the name of the movie? <clears throat> that was a good movie. That was a <coughs> damn. That was a damn good movie. I enjoy the ones that are uh, based on true stories. And uh, that actually show and give you fury. The, yeah, fury. Oh yeah, that was yeah. a real good movie. The, the, I, I like the ones based on true stories that show and give you the feeling of exactly how it uh, how it feels. About, I'll, I'll you tell know, you what, man. Your older brother and you're losing in the combat zone. Yeah, because you guys were both in Iraq too. So yeah, watching uh, oh, what's what's the sniper movie there? American Sniper. Man, there are some points that I could just smell Iraq again. Yeah. yeah. Like, it was, man, we were, you ever we were like, smelling Ramadi. You ever, like, yeah. watch, one of the, watch one of these movies and then you walk outside, like, the next morning or the next day and you're like, son of a fuck. You're like, where's my rifle? Has that ever happened to you guys? Did I forget my rifle somewhere? <laughs> it's happened to me a couple of times. <laughs> I'll watch a movie and I'll walk outside. I'll be like, that smells familiar. <laughs> Pretty much any time I no, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, anytime you're in the bathroom? I was gonna say every time. I was gonna say every like time I drive through Ohio. It smells like a porta john. I was gonna say every, every time I drive through Ohio. <laughs> I'm assuming that all three of us have experienced 130 degree heat in a porta john. Oh, Roger. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, that's the worst. Well, Pat and I were talking about it the other day. His, his tubes and wag bags. <laughs> <laughs> You haven't showered until you showered with 130 degree water that you poured on yourself out of a water bottle. <laughs> I think I'd rather. Man, I don't know if I'd rather. What would you rather use? A piss tube or a porta john? Piss tube. Piss tube? Open air, man. That's true. That does, there's, as long as you don't touch tips with the. With the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You pretty much gotta wrap it before you freaking. You, you put it in a piss too. <laughs> so I, I got uh, I got kidney stones up when I was in Iraq, northern Iraq. We had piss tubes. Oh, man. Man, we were just having to go, like, I lived in a med uh, medical tent and just go back and forth trying to get me to piss out the first tube because there was no way I was letting them <sighs> shove. awful. There was no way I was letting them shove a, a tube up my pecker. 
Like mm. a I catheter? Was, yeah, I was I was it's more terrified. Bad. I was more terrified of that than I was of you know, of touching my my tip to the tube of the of the pipe. Like, it's not that bad. I mean, it's weird. It. I'll say it's weird. I've never so I've never had a male do it. I've always yeah. it's always been a female. There was no females on this. On but this, this bob. But then that that makes it even weirder because then it's like. You're trying to control something that you know is going to naturally happen as soon as yeah. you pull your drawers down. Yeah. And it's like, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. And it's like, and all of a sudden, you know, it's like, I can't imagine what's going through her head. You know, here <laughs> she is putting a tube. Like, she, I don't know. If she, she, uh, she must be getting some type of pleasure out. She probably thinks it's hilarious, you know. Yeah. She probably deals with it, you know, all the time. Yeah. Like anytime she touches her penis. Yeah. I mean, that's just. Well, and so. So we had two corpsmen. They're badass corpsmen. Don't get me wrong. The first time I ever met one of them, he was giving us our our in brief, just basic CLS class. And his opener for the class was, how many of you guys have ever taken a piss and then spit in the urinal afterwards? Do you guys ever do that? Taking a piss and then spit. Like when you spit after you piss into the urinal. No, I've never done that. I may spit first and then piss. Yeah, so... What's it about seeing a man's dick that makes your mouth water? That's what that, this man started off with. I wasn't letting him put a catheter anywhere near. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's true. I was I was on a well. We used to run patrols to a base in Afghanistan, and we left the we left the base one morning, and the cra- the craziest thing happened on it. So we're like we're we we rolled up on the base in the middle of the night, and we stayed on the base. And we could hear like the the Afghan National Army was like running a couple guard towers mm-hmm. near the entrance of this base. It was caught. It was a combat outpost, mm-hmm. and we could hear them arguing up there throughout the, the night. And like I decided, I'm sleeping in. I'm sleeping in the RG31. You know mm-hmm. how these guys are arguing. You don't know what's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. And I freaking locked and loaded my weapon. And then like two or three o'clock in the morning, you know we hear it up in there. You know, one of them shoots the other one. <laughs> we're like, oh, you know, and everyone's out running around. You know, you know, we the other guy gets detained and trying to figure out what the heck happened. And it turned out, it turned out that the other guy was trying to rape the other guy up in the, in the guard tower. Mm. And I was like, yeah, I don't blame him too. I. I'd shoot someone for trying to rape me too. Like, yeah, like, especially at a guard tower. <laughs> <laughs> He's all like, look, we only have six more hours together. Yeah. Leave my <laughs> <laughs> After about three more of those hours, he's like, all right, fucking. <laughs> that's some that's some straight World War Two stuff. Yeah. Uh, well, so so I was I was a recruiter up in New England, um, and I went to this Veterans Day mm-hmm. thing one of the high schools they invited us over we were talking to I can't remember if it's freshmen or sophomores really young kids it was me there was a, a dude from the Air Force in the Gulf War and mm-hmm. they were deployed so I'm not sure why he was there and then there was a couple of Vietnam guys and we had this World War II veteran and this dude he was he was conscripted into the into the army mm-hmm. he was a tanker mm-hmm. he was in the Battle of the Bulge hard man right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But this man uh, is similar to this generation where they do not hold their tongues mm-hmm. and they don't really consider who's around them when they say things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're talking, you know, 13, 14 year old kids. And at first off, he's telling one of the funniest things I've ever heard. They had stopped at a factory. They'd taken it over from the Germans and it was a sherry factory. He was like, so we're about to go. We knew that this combat was about to be bad. He goes, mm-hmm. so we emptied all of our extra gas and we filled up our gas tanks with sherry. <laughs> you know, so then once our, our tracks got stuck in the Battle of the Bulge, we were just getting tanked on the sherry. <laughs> just hoping nothing too heavy hit our tank. Yeah. <laughs> but he was telling these kids, he was like, we had this we had this American, just huge piece of trash. He goes, and I wound up raping one of these one of these young Belgian girls. So I fucking shot him. And I was like, these kids are 13 and 14 years old, yeah. man. Let's not talk about war crimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's straight up with that. I mean, I don't, I don't blame them. Yeah. But. but I was Shit like, got real quick. Yeah, I was like, damn. I'm like, who wants to know about the desert? 
So that next morning, we we get up and leave. We we end up taking this guy with us to back to the base that we came from. This Afghan National Army guy, and the reason why we took him with us is because we know if we left him with that other unit, they were going to kill him mm-hmm. on the spot. And we we're like, we're just going to take him back and let that other you know unit be open. Mm-hmm. We take him back over there, and we get like we get like a third of the way back. We hear this like hear kind of like a faint explosion off in the distance, and then we get a call over the radio from from the base from the. Uh, I don't remember who was on the base, but we get a call from them, and they're like, yeah, we just had a, a rocket attack on the base, and it hit the port of John. <laughs> the Whoa. one port of John on this combat outpost. Wow. And, and the, 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 the running joke after that, you know, after we knew that there was no casualties, the running joke was, man, that would have been a shitty day. <laughs> <laughs> Feel bad for the guys in Dover that have to clean up that body. I know. <laughs> you imagine, like, being on that cop and, like, uh, like you, you just got in trouble the day prior and you, you got to go clean up a, a portage on that got hit by a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> and you wait forever anyway for your, you, you know, you start off with your little wood bullshit with a little hull cut yeah you're sitting on where you pull the barrel out and burn the shit in the diesel every day oh that's awesome so when you when you get a port of john you're like hell yeah yeah, yeah you gotta clean it up now well, after it's been <laughs> after a rocket hit it that's crazy <laughs> but yeah so well like what's uh what are like what are some of the stuff that like what's like some of the stories that like where did you deploy to Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, man. Tell us about the butt stuff on your cop. Yeah, let's hear about the butt stuff. The butt stuff? Well, I just told y'all about that one one kid that was in... uh, We heard about the A&A butt stuff. He was in the uh, heavy weapons uh, platoon. He's the one who got the butt in the mail from his his mom. You know, one other thing that pisses me off, once I got out of the military, I was toughness with guys, and I want to say... No, it was one army and one marine, and both of them had the same thing. And instead of pocket pussies, they had these pussies that you could that would go to your TV on the porn, and and the deal that you put in front of you would do what the porn girl was doing on the TV. What the heck? Yes. <laughs> Jesus. And, and, and so I googled the shit. And that's, I was like, that's like that's, high tech. That's freaking awesome. <laughs> So, okay, so China. China was China because of that one person rule that they had for years. Mm-hmm. They've got an overabundance of males. It's like two or three times as many males as they have females. Right. So they're like emerging in all this sex toy, like in, in what do they call them, waifus or whatever. I, I don't watch anime. I couldn't tell you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like wolf dolls and cybernetic stuff. Like that's some straight up Chinese, like <laughs> yeah. lonely man never going to get married type shit right there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> cat that got a uh, blow up doll but uh, there wasn't enough room in our chew so we had to blow it up hump it and let the air out <laughs> uh, alright so if you had to choose between a zombie apocalypse or an alien which one or, or an alien invasion which one would you guys choose zombies for sure we don't know what kind of weapons aliens have I'll take a <laughs> <laughs> come right I, over I'm here gonna, we load up all our gear and weapons yeah. and just find a high point and get all our boys together with as much ammo yeah. as possible I, I'm done with Pat on that one oh, uh, yeah. though, though the, I want to say it was the CDC because the CDC does have an actual zombie plan do they is, really? they really do it's, it's, I want to know what this plan is insane, can we look this plan up? I, I think so <laughs> um, but basically what it says is that the, the people in smaller communities if you guys ever seen World War Z or read the book yeah, people in, in like New York City and stuff, they're gonna go within a week. Like it's just too densely populated and yeah. whatnot. You're not gonna be able to leave the area. But the people in more rural areas, even debatable College Station in the summertime, they're gonna look for way longer because there's more separation. Roger. You can find places that you can see these assholes coming. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I mean, straight up like Walking Dead style, you find a place in the middle of nowhere and just off whichever ones come by. All right. So if you had to. You know, I, I, I ask, I'm going to ask this in every episode I do. Um, 
you got three items to choose from to start off your zombie apocalypse. You got a lighter, you got a hatchet, or you got a spear. What are you taking? Lighter. Why? A lighter. A lighter. Absolutely, man. What are you taking? Fire cleanses all. Yeah. Mm. Can't have a flamethrower without a lighter. You can't. Yeah, but I think you'll be able to find a lighter somewhere. Well, you can find a hatchet. You know, that's a tough one, Jimmy. I know uh, if... I'd, I'd probably go lighter, or I, w- I would go spear because a hatchet, man, you're, you're still out there on get bit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'd rather poke him at a distance with that spear. <laughs> yeah. Find out, find out how I need to kill him at a distance, you know, because <laughs> you don't know. Yeah. Then have to maybe try to do some uh, wrestling while other zombie bites your ass. No. Yeah. With the hatchet, you know, you're going to have to probably take him to the ground to ch- ch- chop him. You gotta make sure that spear, like, you put some, like, you know, you put, like, a little bit of, like, a sharp, like, a sharp metal, bl- like, blade on the tip of it. Yeah. Because, like, I don't think it's gonna be, like, The Walking Dead where it just sinks into their skulls. You know? maybe, oh, I mean, hit them in the eye. I mean, maybe, maybe after yeah. a few years of decomposing, it might be like that. Right. Well, and you have to add some of them. Well, a bone doesn't really decompose that way, so it's not yeah, gonna get any softer. Yeah, it's not gonna get softer. You know? <laughs> put some old school handlebar grips on it too. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So you can really. Yeah. Bats over here riding a bicycle spear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rigging up to the pedal so it it, oops, <laughs> it pokes in and out. Yeah. <laughs> it's ugly, <only>, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> put a horn on it too. Yeah. <laughs> you, hear, yeah. you can honk at him before you kill him. <laughs> er, er, whack. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> there was a meme I saw going around of this of this AR, this gun, and it was pretty funny. It was like it had a horn instead of like a light underneath it, it had a horn attached to it, and it was like, imagine you breaking into my house. And you hear a horn before you get blasted. <laughs> <laughs> um, just ring up like one of those, uh, one of the, the things on the ice cream trucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> like, tell, tell me that that wouldn't be the creepiest thing. That uh, would be some guy creepy. in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> And you just hear the ding, the ding, yeah. the ding, the ding, the ding, and you hear these <laughs> these ratty old rusted pedals coming on. Yes. Uh, Speak, <laughs> speaking of ice cream trucks, I've always thought, like, why why don't food trucks roll around neighborhoods like ice cream trucks do? Dude, even worse is how am I gonna get a uh, get a ticket for having my music too loud? And this motherfucker actually plays it on the speaker as he drives uh, down I the road. No, yeah. yeah, like I don't understand why can't like a taco truck, a food truck, roll around the neighborhood like an ice cream truck playing, you know. Uh, Garacha? They'd be freaking awesome selling tacos. They'd, they'd be so awesome. I'd be out there every day. Mm. Yeah, what do you? What's your special today? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just have a mariachi band on a trailer behind the truck. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a parade. I mean, I'm, yeah. they would. I'm sure. I'm sure it would be. I don't understand why they do it. Um, yeah. So, what? What are your? What are some of your? What are some of the, the best things that you see happening in the community like today, right now? Um, I see there there's a lot more awareness in here in the Brazos Valley. Also, we do have a lot more uh, options, you mm-hmm. know, for for and and that's one thing that my job really is on top of running groups and teaching classes is resourcing out. And when a veteran has a problem, I, I uh, find a, a, an answer. And one of my main ones is, uh, and luckily here in the Brazos Valley too, our county service officer Pat Patterson is freaking awesome. Like mm-hmm. he's a, he's the Yoda. Like he worked for the VA, and I think he was getting soldiers too much money. So they're like, well, we're gonna let our top salesman go. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so and that's when he got a job uh, working in Bryan. Is freaking awesome like you have any problems with your claims you yeah. go in and talk to him and he is he's he's just good and it's and, a free service for the yeah, veterans yeah absolutely and, and I've who's seen, this through again it's through brazos county yeah he, he, he's our county service officer it's through brazos county but he, he he's actually free and he's just to help veterans yeah oh, and, that's cool and yeah, there's he, a guy over at the va here that 
wait for him to have his claim updated. Oh, when they yeah. have a VA service officer mm-hmm. at the VA. Yeah. And this guy went to Pat. To Pat, because Pat knows all the gray areas and everything yeah. else. And, you know, some of that stuff, because they try to get you every way that they can. It's just as, as simple as how you word something, how you yeah. put a sentence on there. Yeah. And Pat will be like, oh, no, we got to we gotta put this like this. And then it, it just, he's, he's just a... He, he, that's that's how I got the VA to, like, I mean, I didn't, like, scam them out of it, you know. Oh, wow, roger that. But, like, that's basically why they ended up paying for my graduate school is a lot of veterans don't even know. Like, you can use, there's the options, the GI Bill, and there's multiple, like, there's different types of GI Bills depending mm-hmm. on, you know, what you signed up for. But roger. There's also, like, vocational rehab where if you're, you, you have a, a rating of 20% or more or a, a severe disability you know, that gives you a minimum rating of like 10% um, or more. You can use Voc Rehab, and Voc Rehab is kind of neat because, um, you know, I graduated with my, they paid for my undergrad, and then they extended my time to, to, to pay for the master's, which, you know, I'm currently struggling with, you know, to this day. Right. I'm probably going to end up switching my master's program here soon. Roger. Um, but they, they do stuff like that, and it's like, no one really knows about that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And it's like, right. you know, they they do a lot of stuff that the GI Bill won't. They'll pay for, like, vocational schools. Like, if you want to become, like, a welder, they'll teach, they, they'll send you to a school to become a welder. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? They'll they'll send you to flight school or, or something like that. And um, there's, there's stuff that I didn't know about. And it's like, you know, I didn't – I the way I worded it to them – to get them so that the, and they paid so they would pay for my master's program is always just like you know i have multiple extenuating injuries you know whereas like you know there are jobs out there that i could pull off you know work around with an undergrad but at the same time with a master's program um it would put me at a work level where if i had to take off for you know, a certain period of time, it wouldn't affect the people I was working with too much because I'm not, like, right. I'm not like a grunt, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, we all know, you know, coming from the military, it's, you know, the little man is where all the work gets done. Right. So, what what would be... Pat brought the five grand with us, in case you guys hear that. <laughs> that and that's why I love at and CC right there on the phone, it says fraud risk. Oh, I, was, <laughs> yeah. I had one a minute ago that said telemarketer. Yeah, I had, I had one the other day, that, or that, the other second that said telemarketer. <laughs> oh, man, I love the I, I, I on, on Verizon, I was able to name it. So whenever an unidentified number came in, it comes with anyone. It doesn't matter if it's scamming. It says it says dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever I don't know who it is, it just says I'll back it says dickhead. <laughs> I'll, I'll look it up and be like, oh, this dickhead. You need to put like Donald Trump. Anybody? Uh, he's calling you. Old Donnie's calling me. <laughs> Donald Trump. I gotta take this. <laughs> it's way more important than talking to your uh, professor. Yeah, uh, the president's calling me on my personal. Line. I gotta go. <laughs> Never mind, I'll call him back. <laughs> You're right. What you're teaching is more important than the president. <laughs> <laughs> We're bros like this. <laughs> so what's one what's one like closing thing that you would like to tell all the listeners and and for everyone that's local, like what's one thing that you wish that wish to tell them and one you you think that they need to know? You know, just uh reach out to other veterans if they're here in the Brazos Valley, you know, just contact, uh, even if you don't want to come to groups, contact me, you know, let me know who, who you are, what you like to do, because I get people all the time call me and say, uh, they want to take, do I have some veterans to go do this, uh, go do that, you know, mm-hmm. uh, that duck hunt y'all went on, I mean, there's that was all, a, there's all kinds of, yeah, of, of, of awesome <laughs> shit that comes up, but. Uh, I, I, I just plead with veterans, too, that are not in a good spot. And you know when you're not in a good spot. And we all know in this room, too, you got to move around. Like, golf's one thing that helped me. Because mm-hmm. I'll get out there on the golf course, yeah, I, I, I'll have my Glock. I know Mac always packing heat, too. It makes it a little easier. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but, you know, it just, we're moving around. 
before I used to, and I still don't like going to the grocery store, and if it's crowded, I'll turn and walk away. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you gotta, you got to do things you don't want to do. you got to go places you don't want to go. Like, I, I love going to the show solo, but, of course, I'll pack heat doing that, too, but I'll go when it's not crowded. So now I've gotten to where if my son wants to go to the show and it's crowded, I'll go when it is crowded, too. Mm-hmm. And it, it's good to get through that those things that bother us because it becomes easier and easier because what we don't realize is we're adapting. Yeah. You know, and uh, you just have to remember that no matter what, civilians suck. Yeah. They don't get it. There's no honor. There's no respect. And there's no loyalty. It's a, it's a lonely life, man. When, yeah. when you've never been on a team like, like we all have been on, it is a, you know, and you, you, you go and experience that team and then you come back from it. It can be a lonely life, you know? Roger that. And yeah. you, it's like, you got, once you realize like how good a team is together and mm-hmm. you're functioning together and you get back into a civilian or you are a civilian, it's like, it, it sucks being lonely. Mm-hmm. And like, and just like you said, it's almost, you know, you basically, what you said is that like, you got to face your fears. Roger that. You got to face them and you, you, you do that through the, the, you know, you, you do that with yourself, but you can also do it with the community too. Absolutely. And, and just remember, intestinal fortitude is is digging deep and doing the right thing, not necessarily the thing you want to do. Yeah. Uh, I know it took me a long time, and Pat's very well aware of this to to actually come out and talk to somebody. Roger. But I thought I was too. I thought I was too. I was worried. Like, yeah. I don't need to. I don't need somebody's help. Yeah. I was wrong. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, it's it's not weakness. It's growth. Yeah. I, I realized, you know, it's just, I didn't I didn't realize it until I got here. It's what I needed. Mm-hmm. So it's exactly what I needed. Well, right. I, I appreciate you guys coming out here, and I appreciate you coming on, Bacha. You oh, know, absolutely. You know, this is great. We'll have to do it again. Um, we'll come up with another topic we can you know talk about and Anything make, but make some more. Yeah, yeah Roger that. <laughs> <laughs> next time we'll next time we'll talk about how hard my nipples are right now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, next time, don't bring your vibrator when you're we <laughs> talking about butt stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys coming on uh, again. This, uh, this is with Mac and this is with Bacha. Um, if you guys got any questions, you can reach out to us. Uh, you can reach out to me on Instagram. You can email me. Um, if you have any questions, you know you can contact me and I'll point you to, to Bacha. Um, and if that's this is all, I appreciate you guys coming on. This was this is great. We'll have to do it again sometime. Stay up and keep your yetis up. Yep. Amen. <laughs> but uh, stuff. Oh, I don't use the yeti. I'm too cheap for that. <laughs> <laughs> I just use igloo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he says solo cups. <laughs> <laughs>